Josh Rubin from East West Healing Performance. Today, I want to talk about protein. Now, why do I want to talk about protein? For many reasons, because there's a lot of diets out there. The Paleolithic diet, you have the Atkins diet, um, you have uh, certain parts of metabolic typing, um, you have certain parts of uh, Dr. McCullough's nutritional typing. There's all these diets out there that promote protein, 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 protein. The problem is, a lot of people don't focus on the fats and the carbs with that. And it's just like a car. I always use the example of my clients. You can't just put gas in your car and expect your car to run good for the next 80 years. Your car needs certain other fluids. You have to check the tires. You have to get a, a ch checkup on the car or whatever. There's certain things that the car needs to run properly. Same thing the, like the body. The body is a fine-tuned machine. If you give the body what it needs, it'll actually auto-regulate itself. That's what it is the body is designed to do. Our bodies don't need tons of supplements. Of course, they should be used when needed for specific purposes, but everyone's popping tons of supplements, and everyone's so afraid of damn carbohydrates that we're taking this to a whole other level, and it's actually creating dysfunction. Now, say, when I say carbohydrates, I'm talking about you know more the vegetables as well. You have, I should say it's more because I go and teach that all these metabolic types, they think I'm a fast oxidizer, I'm a protein type. I need to eat tons of protein and fat, and my vegetable intake's way down here. I can't eat grains because I'm a fast oxidizer and make me tired and crash, but my vegetables are still low. But what I saw, and even in myself, so I'm not putting anyone down. I'm using real-life examples with myself. I learned from myself that back in the day when I did metabolic typing, and I was a protein-type fast oxidizer, 87%, that I thought about protein and fats, and my vegetable was down here. I kind of nibbled on carrots and... I don't know what it was. Maybe I heard something incorrectly. Maybe I interpreted incorrectly. I don't really know, but that's what I was doing. But that's what I see with cl clients that I'm working with, as well as students all over the world that are fast oxidizers. What I'm seeing is everyone's a fast oxidizer protein type. Everyone's afraid to be any other, any other type. Well, that's beside the point. But what I'm seeing is everyone's overdosing on protein. And the problem with this is eating too much protein and not enough fat and carbs, or too much fat and protein and not enough carbs, is the same thing as eating too much carbs, not enough fat and protein. It's just disguised. When you eat too much protein and not enough carbohydrates, I should say sugars in the diet and the right types of sugars, the body goes into a, a, a response and the body actually releases insulin when you eat too much protein and not enough carbs in order for the cells to absorb these amino acids and for the body to synthesize these proteins. And in the process of disposing of the amino acids, <clears throat> from the cells, it'll actually lower your blood sugar to a hypoglycemic state. Well, this is a huge stress of the body, and the body actually releases cortisol, and adrenaline, and glucagon, and growth hormone, and prolactin, and estrogen, and, you thought I was going to say something else, in order to raise blood sugar back up, because you need this to actually survive. So when this happens, there's a problem, because adrenaline actually mobilizes glycogen from the liver, It'll actually mobilize, or I should say, it'll mobilize fatty acids from the tissues, push them into the blood. This actually decreases oxygen, oxygen consumption in the body and actually increases heat production, which will oxidize the fats. And if you've stored polyunsaturated fatty acids or unsaturated fatty acids in your tissues, when this happens, the breakdown of this can cause a problem. And I'll go into that. So cortisol is released at the same time to raise blood sugar, and it does this by gluconeogenesis. It actually breaks down the tissues into amino acids and um, fats into sugars. And it does this so your body has enough energy and enough sugar to provide it to the brain and elsewhere. The problem with this is when it's breaking down tissue and adrenaline's mobilizing fatty acids from the tissue, and they're unsaturated, let's say, in your tissues... Um, and if it's not, you're still breaking down your tissues. It's still catabolic. It's still a problem. If it's unsaturated or polyunsaturated from all the oils you're eating or all the vegetables you're eating or just all the nuts you're overdoing, what can happen is that the body's going to release these free fatty acids into the bloodstream. This can downregulate the thyroid, slow your metabolism down, uh, lower your pulse, increase your estrogen levels can actually increase the amount of cholesterol in your body and lower the amount of thyroid hormones. can actually inhibit the immune system. can cause gut problems. I mean, it's, it's basically endless. But the major problem with this, and this is kind of a catalyst, is when your body's breaking down all these tissues, it breaks down tryptophan in your tissues. And most people can't deal with excess amounts of tryptophan from the meats that they're eating as well as from the tissues that you're breaking down. This tryptophan is actually converted into serotonin. Serotonin is excitatory to the central nervous system. It's a neurotoxin. 
It causes vascular permeability, dilation, causes dilation and vascularity in the gut, which can lead to leaky gut syndrome. But serotonin actually will perpetuate this um, cycle that I'm talking about because it actually decreases, decreases glucose oxidation, increases lipid peroxidation, which causes the very cycle that I just explained in a simplistic sense. So you don't want to eat a diet that's too high in protein. Now, what do you do? You want to make sure you're actually eating the right amount of protein, carbs, and fats during the day. You want to make sure you're eating the right amounts of protein. You want to make sure you're eating the right types of protein. You want to make sure you're eating the right types of fats like coconut oil and olive oil and butter and dairy. You want to make sure they're eating the right types of vegetables like all types of root vegetables. Squashes, tomatoes, cucumbers, bamboo shoots, carrots, beeps, parsnips, turnips, uh, cucumbers, peppers, you name it. These are the very things that can help regulate your blood sugar so you don't get these effects. Add in some salt to your diet. Salt that's free of additives and iron in order to help regulate your adrenaline, adrenaline levels during the day because salt actually helps to regulate or downregulate high adrenaline levels. You don't have to take all these fancy supplements to regulate this. All you have to do is regulate your blood sugar during the day by snacking, having enough meals, eating the right ratios of foods and the right foods in order to regulate your blood sugar during the day, adding some salt into your diet in order to regulate adrenaline levels, and making sure that you're not eating tons of protein at any given point because that can create the same blood sugar fluctuation as eating too many carbohydrates. So hopefully you've, um, hopefully you've enjoyed this and learned something, and I'll check you later.